Welcome dear learners. Today we are going to discuss about the environmental impact assessment. So environmental impact assessments have been carried out on ad hoc basis for decades. These were formalized under the United States Environmental Policy Act 1969 in the USA first EAA law national environmental protection act came into force on january 1st 1970 which required the developers to publish an environmental impact statement before implementing any plan so the role of ea was formally uh, formally recognized on the earth summit that was held at rio conference in 1992 and uh, what we call that EA links environment with development and is an appraisal of environmental health and social implications of a planned development so the impacts uh, impact statements are prepared to assess the effects of a project on human beings plants, animals, soil, water, air, climate, material assets, as well as cultural heritage. So, so if we go for the definition of uh, the environmental impact assessment, so it is defined by many authors. So in India, Ministry of Environment and Forest and Climate Change in 1994 defines the environmental impact assessment as a process by which uh, the a process by which information about environmental effects of a project is collected both by developed and from other sources and taken into account by the relevant decision making body before a decision is given on whether a development uh, should go ahead or not so basically uh, the all the impact assessments all the assessments are taken into account before uh, any project is implemented so some effects of the projects are extrapolated and what could be the mitigation measures and what could be the harmful effects if harmful effects are more then the decisions or the strategy for implementing the projects may be modified or the implementation of the project may be cancelled so there are many other definitions also uh, depending upon the country and uh, depending upon the various authors environmental impact assessment that is EA is a systematic process to identify predict and evaluate the environmental effects of proposed action of the uh, or actions or the projects for example here the actions may be the implementation of any kind of industry or any kind of projects that may harm the environment so abroad definition of environment is adopted broad in the sense which encompasses all living non-living things in, in the environment so what could be the impacts of the project on such kind of components of environment these are all calculated so uh, whenever appropriate social cultural health effects are also considered as an integral part of EIA so finally, particular attention is given in EA for preventing mitigation and offsetting the significant adverse effects of proposed undertakings. So before major decisions are taken and when all alternatives are still open. So basically, what, how can we modify our project uh, in n number of modifications like uh there is a mitigation strategies there are prevention strategies so everything is open uh, when project is still to be started or implemented to inform all stages of decision making these are the tools of the ea to inform all stages of decision making include final approval and establishment of condition for project implementation and also 
uh, at the end uh, when the, any document or EA is submitted to an approving authority there is a public participation so public participation is very important where in the uh, public domain the information about the project is published and the public is asked to submit their uh, views about the project of uh, or any kind of modification required in such projects so there are many kind of representatives many uh, peoples are there in representative uh, from the public side so to integrate environmental consideration and safeguard into all phases of project design construction and operation so what are the main uh, aims and the objectives of the EIA so the aim of EIA is to provide an accurate prediction of effects of a development uh, before it is carried out so that new plan may be modified accordingly so the all, one and only an important aim is we can extrapolate and we can uh, predict what could be the impacts of the projects like uh, may it uh, be causing the water pollution air pollution and other kind of things so what can be the various methods by which these impacts can be reduced so it is an uh, enabling tool for informed decision making and has a flexible approach for the environment management so there are various kinds of uh, aims and objectives for the immediate aim of EA is to inform the process of decision making by identifying potential significant environmental effects and risks of development proposals improve environmental design of the proposal ensure the resource and use it appropriately and efficiently identify appropriate measures for mitigation or mitigating the potential impacts of the proposal and facilitate Inform, uh, inform decision making including setting up of environmental terms and conditions for implementing the proposal so other aims and objectives the ultimate or long-term aim of EIA is to promote sustainable development by ensuring the developmental projects do not undermine critical resource and ecological functions as well-being lifestyle uh, livelihood of communities and people who depend on, on them so basically in long term if we are using water resources of a particular area and in long term we should use those resources sustainably so is that this water may be available for the local communities also so using the such kind of resources sustainably then protect human health and safety avoid irreversible change and serious damage to the environment safeguard valued resources natural areas and ecosystem components enhance the social aspects of the proposal so it is the multi-dimensional multi-pronged approach by which the environment is say basically EIA is a link between the development and environment how the environment is safeguarded with the help of various kinds of instruments that we call EIA so that we can use our resources sustainably so this is in short when any environment at any place or at any ecosystem and project is initiated so initially there is this line represents the conditions of the ecosystem or environmental components maybe it air water soil natural habitat social cultural whatever it is this is the natural condition before the project is initiated so when the project is initiated and it causes various changes in the landscape in the environment or water air of the uh, certain kind of place so the condition or quality of environmental components is reduced so here we can see a decline in the uh, environmental components and certainly that is the adverse environmental impact with the project so this is the this triangle represents the impacts of the project so these impacts we have to reduce either we have to change 
the uh, we have to change certain steps of the projects or we have to use mitigation measures or we have to provide certain kind of uh, like we call it social corporate social responsibility by which we provide employment school college university or townships or providing the clean water availability in the area depending upon what kind of impacts the projects has so that this kind of impact is reduced so this was in short how a project uh, impacts a certain kind of population when there is uh, no uh, i mean uh, that when there is an impact because of the project uh, certain uh, i mean the components of the project causes certain impacts on the environment so <clears throat> here is the overall process of eia in which first proposal is identify identification of the proposal first for example the setting up of a certain kind of industrial setup or a, a certain kind of project then we do screening that is the first step and we will be discussing these steps one by one and on the screening it is decided whether the project needs EIA or not so uh, if the EIA is rapid kind of maybe it is a kind of a small project does not have much impacts on the environment then we go for the rapid EIA and certain projects which are exempted from the EIA so this uh, that comes under this category and the main uh, where the full EIA is required so we go for further steps like scoping analysis mitigation EIA report and review these all leads to the public involvement these steps sc scoping analysis mitigation EIA report and reviewing so here in reviewing public participation is very important so the public gives certain uh, uh, I mean they raise certain kind of queries or their grievances about the project so nowadays we are uh, seeing certain kind of projects they face certain kind of protesters from the local authorities or local uh, population then uh, after reviewing we go for the decision making either it is uh, approved or modified if uh, the, the, on the basis of the recommendations or reviews uh, it can be uh, modified or it may not be approved and then we have to redesign and resubmit and it will go all again uh, from these processes like scoping analysis mitigation and if it is approved then follow up monitoring every year they have to submit a report in the month of September uh, monitoring management evaluation there are the visits there is the inspections for the various criteria when a certain project or in the industry is set it up so first step now is the screening in screening uh, is to determine whether or not EIA is required for a particular project what level of EIA is required that I have discussed earlier whether EIA is required or not then the outcomes is uh, of this screening is full or comprehensive EIA in this uh, earlier steps we have discussed or limited EA that rapid EA is required or no EA is required in uh, tools of screening so the project listed here is in screening uh, are inclusive list of proje uh, projects that must undergo EA that are basically notified in different countries about different projects like defense projects they need not to go for the EAA or the any kind of projects that are, is in the border area exclusive list of project exempted from the EA this is also some projects uh, that must not go for the EA inclusive that must go under the EA case by case examination determine whether project may have significant environmental effects if so the project should go about the, for the EA and the combination of both these uh, inclusive exclusive and case by case these are the various tools for the screening so EA for example in this uh, graph if EA is ruled out that is exclusive sometimes some projects like defense projects they are excluded from the EA so no need of EA in such kind of projects so then case by case this is the same uh, as earlier uh, slide 
so mandatory EAs these are notified some of our 30 kind of projects uh, they need EIA and scoping scoping is to identify key issues and impacts to establish limited studies so the it begins once screening is completed so it is only for the projects which needed needs full EIA the most important step uh, for the EIA is scoping and it establishes the content and scope of an EIA report. The outcomes of this are identifies key issues and impacts to be considered, layouts the foundation of an effective process, saves time, many and reduces the conflict. So there is certain kinds of scoping uh, like first one is close close scoping wherein the contents of the uh, and the scope of an ea report is predetermined by laws and modified through closed consultations between a developer and competent authority and open or public scoping a transparent process based on public consultation then actors of this scoping are proponent, EA, consultant, supervisory authority for the EA, other responsible agencies and affected public and interested public. Then the various uh, processes of scoping are for example prepare. So prepare a scope outline then develop the outline through inform, informal consultation with environmental and health authorities then make an outline available then compile an executive list of concerns evaluate relevant concerns to establish key issues then organize issues into uh, impact categories then amend the outline accordingly then develop uh, terms of res reference that we call TOR for the impact analysis then monitor progress against TOR and revise as necessary. So the impact uh, analysis is the Im impact prediction and assessment uh, that is most important part of technical process. The inputs and outputs related to evaluating the impacts are given uh, like in here the type of impact uh, maybe it is uh, biophysical social health or economic and nature direct or indirect or cumulative magnitude or severity may be high or moderate extent local regional transboundary or global timing immediate or long term duration temporary or permanent uncertainty low likelihood or high probability reversibility reversible or irreversible and significance important or not important so these are various kinds of the impacts that uh, are analyzed in the impact analysis so the various kinds of checklists by methods by which we go for the impact analysis like checklist matrix networks overlay or and geographical information system expert systems professional judgment so these all uh, the tools they will take a separate lecture if we uh, are going to discuss about these uh, tools so impact mitigation is the another step it is to avoid and minimize or remedy or adverse impacts of a project <clears throat> If in a scoping after scoping or analysis it is seen that there are certain adverse effect of a uh, project then we propose the remedy by which such kind of adverse impacts could be reduced then to ensure that residual impacts are within acceptable levels we should not go to the extreme event then to enhance environmental and social benefits this is all in the impact mitigation so the framework of impact uh, mitigation is to avoid first we have to try to avoid such kind of impacts if we cannot avoid then uh, avoid evidence can be used uh, then done by alternative sites or technology or elimination of habitat loss 
we can if uh, we see there is a certain kind of uh, adverse impact we can shift to other location so if that is not possible then the mitigation actions during design construction and operation to minimize or eliminate the habitat loss then overall if such kind of losses happens like habitat loss then we go for the comp compensation used as a last resort uh, to offset the habitat loss so the compensation is very undesirable and avoidance is desirable this is common so another uh, step is step 5 that is reporting so different names of EIA reports are environmental impact assessment report environmental impact uh, statement environmental statement environmental assessment report environmental effects statements so all the things that comes in screening scoping um, analysis mitigation that we have to put in such kind of reports so all the reports have different kind of significance so the contents of reports uh, there should be a description of the project there should be an outlay of the main alternatives studied by the developer and an indication of the main reasons for this choice a description of aspects of environmental environment likely to be uh, significant affected by the proposed project a description of the likely significant environmental effects of the proposed project measures to prevent reduce uh, and possibly offset adverse environmental effects and non-technical summary and an indication of any difficulty technical deficiency or lack of know-how or uh, and that are encountered while the compilation of required information so these all should be in the report these all components so the last one is the review the review uh, review the quality of EIA report this is the reviewing authority that is the audit authority they take public comments into account that is the public participation when the project after the analysis is put into the public domain so then <clears throat> it is uh, it goes for the public uh, I mean uh, uh, I mean review so the, those comments are also taken into account determine if the information is sufficient identify any deficiencies to be corrected so who will perform the review so environmental agencies like in Canada comprehensive studies standard commission in Netherlands uh, internal agency committee in USA planning in India we have also a separate kind of agencies like uh, that is uh, made from the Ministry of Environment and Forest or climate change they uh, develop an EIA uh, monitoring authority so who monitor or review all such kind of reports the panel uh, is independent it contains various kinds of experts administrators and last one is the decision making when we have to make the decision whether we have to approve modify or not to approve the project so to provide the key inputs to help uh, to determine if the proposal is accepted or to establish environmental terms and condition for the project implementation so if we have uh, to approve the plan then we go for the approval and if we not then we have to propose certain kind of modifications in the project so, so the decision making process involves consultation between the project uh, proponent that is uh, assisted visually by the consultants and the impact assessment authority that is assisted by the experts groups and the decision on the environmental clearance is arrived through a number of steps including evaluation of EA and uh, that uh, also uh, based on the environmental management plan so this all uh, is about the decision making uh, process so the monitoring when the project is approved so we have to monitor the projects monitoring should be done during uh, both construction and operation phases of project monitoring will enable the regulatory authority to review the validity uh, of the predictions and conditions of implementation of environmental management plan so they ensure the implementation of the conditions uh, attached 
to a decision so what kind of the implementations have been approved such kind of uh, parameters should be followed and uh, it also verifies the impacts as predicted and permitted confirms the mitigation measures are working as expected and take uh, action to manage any unforeseen changes so the key components of uh, the monitoring are establish baseline condition major impacts of the project as constructed verify or conformity with establish it with conditions and acceptable limits and establish links to environmental management plans and carry out periodic checks uh, third party audits so this was all about the ea uh, that in brief i hope you all enjoy thank you mm -hmm.